had a few requests for covering how to do a starless workflow. Well, this is a pretty big topic and not really well suited for the two minute tutorial format, but I thought I could do a simplified version of how I use it just to share some of the concepts. The core idea here is that you can separate an image into a starless version and a stars only version. You can then aggressively process the starless image without worrying about distorting the stars. The stars only image can then be enhanced themselves before the stars are added back in. I'm going to start here using my image of Malat 15, the heart of the heart. Now there are two fundamental ways you can do starless. You can start from the linear image or you can start with the nonlinear image. Technically, the best place to go starless is in the linear domain before any stretches are applied. But I mostly do narrowband and I like to create my SHO color image in the nonlinear domain after I have shaped the individual HA03 and S2 images. Also, I find that narrowband stars typically look pretty funky in color. And I find that as I fix the color of the image and in the initial processing, this helps the stars that I extract. So my method starts in the nonlinear domain. It seems to work well for me, but your mileage may vary. At any rate, this will still share some of the key concepts that I think are important here. For this narrowband image, I'm using a nonlinear SHO image after the initial color adjustments have been made. The very first step here is to remove stars. To do this, I use a premium tool, the Star Exterminator by RC Astro. I use it for a very simple reason. It's the best tool in the class. And when I do this, I'm going to check the uh, generate star image because I want to get a star map out of this. And I'm going to check unscreen stars. This is recommended for um, this is recommended when you're using nonlinear images in cases where you are likely to be processing the stars quite a bit before adding them back in. And this is going to be true for what we're doing here, so I'll check that. So I'm going to start this process up. This will take a while, so I'll pause the video. Okay, now we have two images. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label these because I'll need to know the names later. So this one is the starless image and this one is stars. Now the next thing I would do is I would process these two images. In the case of the color image, I do pretty extensive processing. But for today, all I'm really going to do is a little bit of curves transform. We'll just put a little bit of contrast in there. Open up a live preview. I'll put in a little bit of an S-curve here. And maybe I'll just boost the saturation a little bit. And that will have to represent what processing I would normally do to the image. Let's apply that. Okay, so let's say now whatever processing we're going to do on the color or the color starless image is done. Now we want to look at the stars. And the stars, like I say, often look a little bit funky here. And they do look funky. It looks like we have a bit of a magenta red coloration in here. So we're going to deal with that. And I'm going to deal with that with the curves tool. We'll reset this and we're going to open a live preview. And the first thing I want to do is pull down the red a little bit. Next thing is I'm going to go to green and I'm going to put a couple of handles in here and I'm going to take the lower one and I'm going to bring that up a little bit so we get some of that magenta bias out of there a little bit. Maybe I'll take the red down a little bit more here. And finally, I'll probably do just a little bit of this contrast suppression. With that, I'll apply that to the image of the stars. And now things are more neutral and a little bit better behaved. Finally, um, I probably want to reduce the star sizes. The star sizes have grown a little bit because they came from the nonlinear domain and there was a stretch there. So I can counter some of that by simply looking at the neutral curve and pulling that down. And again, we'll put that in a live preview. And as I pull this down, you can see that we're actually shrinking our stars. Some of the smaller ones are fading out and the bigger ones are getting smaller in size. So we'll do something modest, say like that. We'll apply that to the image. And at this point, we have an improved version of the stars image. Now we want to add that back in. And when we, since we took the stars out by an unscreening process, we're going to need to add that back in with a screening function. And the screening function is something that we're going to apply with pixel math. 
In the pixel math, I have an equation here, which I'll zoom in on so you can see it a little bit better. And it's basically just a way of adding the stars back in. And when I hit this, what we're going to do is create a brand new version of the image, which is a combination of the two. And with that, we now have our new version of the image with the stars back in. The stars are smaller. They've been improved uh, through the processing that we've done on that. And then the background um, has also been enhanced by the processing. And one has not crossed into the other. Um, and with this kind of a starless approach, you can be very aggressive on your processing and still get a very nice natural looking image.